All right. Hello, you fucks. Welcome to John Solo's Beer Brigade. I'm John Solo. You are not. Let me go ahead and flip over here. We've got Andrew Gray with us in the house. Look at that. And we are, uh, I didn't know what to build this. I, I've not made a separate graphic because, <clears throat> Andrew, you're kind of a big deal. And you kind of have your own segment at this point. <laughs> so I need to make our own graphic. For, for at, at this time, I'm, I'm kind of encompassing this in my story time segment, but I, I need to make an Andrew Gray graphic is what I need to do just for you. Um, the crowd's all here, and we're, uh, we're going to be working on uh, Bad to be Noble today. We're going we're gonna to preview this to the world. I'm, am, I, am I right? This just came well, out. John, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it just came out today. Now, I have to ask, if you're going to make my own graphic, can you I make am. me skinnier? <laughs> in fact, in fact, I cannot make you skinnier. I mean, it's, I'm not very good at the grabbing. I can, I can make you into. I'll, what I'll do is I'll take your head and I'll transpose it onto a skinny dude. That's what I'll do for you. Um, we can do that. Well, actually, actually, to tell you the truth, I'm getting skinnier by the day. I'm 22 I'm... pounds lighter than I was two months ago. So holy shit, man. Look at you. I you had yep. mentioned that you were you were getting into the health kick thing. What what are you doing to, to do that? Is changing your eating, you're working out, what are you um, doing? Well, yes, I'm changing my eating habits. I'm I'm eating less. <laughs> um cutting out things that I don't need like potatoes and french fries and all that sort of stuff. And then I go to the gym every morning at seven o'clock. That's awesome, man. What kind of uh, what kind of workouts do you like to do at the gym? Oh, right now I'm just concentrating on cardio to lose weight. So it's it's a about forty minute mill and about four and a half, a little over four miles an hour at a ten percent incline. So I'm hoofing it. Dude, that incline is what'll kill you. Everything else is it's not that bad, but once you start to put that incline on, oh, that, that gets you every time. I know I've done it. Um, What's a, you're, you're taking out some of the carbs. Is that what you're doing from your, from your diet? Yes. Basically I'm just eating less. Yeah, I get it. Well, I'm and just, just in I'm, time for uh, Thanksgiving. That's uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah, Thanksgiving is going to help you a lot. I know it. Yeah. We were, uh, Oh God, no. Well, we were prepping that today is what we were doing. So I, I had to take a break in the middle of my booth time and I had to go, uh, <clears throat> I had to go, pull the smoked turkey off of the, uh, off the smoker. And I got that out. Um, then Jody had to go do a run somewhere. So I had to stop right before our session here and feed the dogs. They want the smoked turkey, by the way, we're not getting it. Um, and we got the, uh, we're, we're going to well, two different ones this year. Are you guys, is Dominique, I'm, I'm assuming Dominique is cooking, right? Yes, he's cooking. We've got some of my family and some friends coming. Oh so yeah. He's going to do that, which is cool, except no turkey here. No, I can be no. a heck of a lot th more thankful over a great big beef over. So that's what we're having. Nice. Dude, that sounds delicious. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I'm jealous With of that. Yeah. Oh, With the horseradish. Gotta too. have the sauce. Yeah. Um, I, uh, we're, we're doing two different ones this year. And, uh, um, uh, typically we, we do another Turkey is, 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 well, wait a minute. Tracy's asking, is there a reason I call him Dominique instead of Dominic? Yeah. It's because it's, I probably say it wrong, Trace. That's probably the reason why <laughs> there's, there's no yes, doubt about it. Yes, you do it. actually. It yeah, is Dominic. Yeah. yeah <laughs> sorry. I, uh, Jesus Christ. Um, wait, yeah, it's, it's because I'm a blithering idiot. You work with me every day, Trace. You should know this. Um, we're doing two this year and it, one of them, I have no idea what we're getting into. It's my sister-in-law's and it's the first time I've done it over at their place this year. The second one we're doing is at my brother's place or my nephew's place. One of those two. And we do that one every year. And, um, Typically, what they do is everybody brings in a dish, and you never know what you're getting into. Um, but my brother makes homemade noodles. These Ooh. things, I got to say, dude, they have to be a freaking quarter inch thick, these homemade noodles. Oh, they are freaking to die for. So I've given up. I'm not, I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to eat well. Um, I'm going to eat a lot. I'm just not going to eat healthy. That's not going to be the case this week. That's, we're getting around that. Um, but congratulations. Good on you, man. Um, yeah, well, what... all I'm, all, all I'm doing is spending more time in the gym to sort of <laughs> pre-lose what I know I'm going to end up eating. I get it. I get it entirely. Um, let's, uh, <clears throat> speaking of the dogs, um, I, I, uh, unfortunately they are out now. My dogs do pretty well. One of the Huskies, she is, 
She's built for this kind of shit. She loves it. But the other one, she's a little bit more delicate. So I hate to say we're on, we're, we're on like a, I got to be out of here by 525. So I think we got enough time though. Somewhere in there. I think we're good. I don't mean okay. to limit us today, but um, <clears throat> first off, uh, as you know, Bad to Noble just came out. Um, Andrew Gray, obviously the, the uh, world famous author at this point. Um, I'm going to read you the blurb real quick um, so you guys can get an idea of what we're getting into here. And of course, we're going to be doing the do out reading. So Andrew's going to talk about bananas as he does because those are his favorite food. Um, by the way, bananas are really healthy for you. Maybe you should consider. I'm just saying. Yeah, but bananas suck. <laughs> no, you suck bananas. Anyways, Bad to Be Noble by Andrew Gray. Well, sequel you like, to Bad but to be I don't. <laughs> I only, look, I'm, I'm, 20 bucks is 20 bucks, all right? You asked <laughs> for it, dude. <laughs> 20 bucks is why so I do what I got to do. Um, bad to Be Good, book three. <laughs> for, only 20 bucks? Okay. <laughs> did, you have, did you ever figure out, too? So we were at GRL, and uh, everybody knows Andrew Gray hates bananas. He's offended by them. So we're at GRL, and uh, he, he tells me, he rips me up some, one side and down the other, making fun of me, and he got ahead of me about three times as we're sitting in the GRL lobby one day. So he's doing his signing. There's a big book signing, and everybody's in there, and he's got his table set up, and he's got a line of people. And of course he does. He's Andrew fucking Gray. I sneak up behind him and put a banana on his table. Um just walk away ever so slyly. Um, and you, you didn't even see me put a bed. Did you? Trey said to she she saw you just look over and go, nah. Just like throw it off your table, which is fantastic. Anyways. Sorry. No, yeah, yeah. actually what I did was I picked it up so I would not actually have to touch it and dropped it behind the table. There's only so many, I mean, some bananas you can't do that with. Um, but Sorry, uh, can't help it. For glass artist Ashton Weller, Longboat Key seems like the perfect place to start over. It's warm, it's sunny, and far from the dangerous X he left behind in Chicago, even if his glass studio does get even more uncomfortable in the Florida heat. <clears throat> it's also home to Terrence Manetti, a man who turns into Ashton's inadvertent hero when he saves him from some unsavory types at a local restaurant, and may turn into more than that. Former mobster Terrence has been in witness protection with his brothers ever since they turned state's evidence against their former employer. His brothers have a different life here. Filled with family and small-time honest jobs, and Terrence doesn't know whether to be jealous or derisive. Not until he meets Ashton, anyway. With Ashton, Terrence could build the kind of life he's never dared to want. The kind of life where he won't need the skills he learned in organized crime, or so he thinks, until Ashton's past comes looking for him dot 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 or ellipses as they say in the industry this book is dedicated to karen and martin for taking me to longboat key and helping to get my imagination running these people took you on a cruise is that what they did no K karen has a beach house on longboat key and she let dominic and i use it a couple years ago um for a couple days so that we could have some peace and quiet when we were visiting Dude, that's fucking awesome. And, well, the nice thing is that um, in January, we're going down going to Florida to visit Karen and Martin, and we're going to be spending some time at said beach house again. Oh, hell yeah. None of my friends have beach houses. I need to make some different friends, apparently. I, I, I don't have friends that take me on cruises, no beach, house, nothing. Well, New York, well, it may, helps when you, Karen is, is the New York Times bestselling author, Karen Rose. There you go. I did not know that either. Yeah, she's she's one of my best friends, and she's an abs absolute. She's like, she's like my best friend, and and part of my sister, and God knows what else. She's just amazing. That New York Times bestseller thing. Now that's kind of a big deal. I see a lot of authors have that bestseller next to their name, and I never really trust that one. But New York Times bestseller. That's kind of a big one, isn't it? Yes, that's that that is the big time. Yeah, yeah, I. Uh, yeah, that's I the big I, time. I'm not sure if I've worked for a New York Times. Are you a New York Times bestselling author? You should be. I wish. Fantastic. <laughs> I wish. Do they sell our kind of books on the New York Times? I don't know if they do or not. Um, actually, some of our some of our authors, some authors that I know who do write MM fiction, have made the New York Times bestseller list. I did not know that. Look at that. 
Well, we this is an educational show as well. Um, let me now. You you said now. I want to make sure here because I've obviously never read this book. I I'm going to be. I'm scrolling back here. I don't mean to be unprofessional or anything, but um, I'm going to be Terrence and you're going to be Ashton, right? Is that the case? And we're starting on chapter one. You're going to be Terrence and you're going to read the, you're going to read everything else because I get to be the kid. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course you do. Stealing the show, motherfucker. All right. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. Are you- I think I'm ready to go. Are you chapter ready? one. Mm-hmm. Good, because I got the first line. You do? Chapter right. one. Are you coming to the driftwood tonight. Terrence took a break from pricing weed whackers to answer Jerome's question. He sighed and placed the art implements on the shelf. Is it Wednesday already? Not that he hated getting together for what amounted to a weekly family dinner with Richard, Jerome, and their families, but he was now the odd man out. They had partners, and each had an important little boy in their lives. Both boys had him wrapped around their little fingers, but Terrence found the happiness grating. Richard and Jerome were paired off and did more and more things as a family. Not that he wanted to push his way in, but it left him feeling a little like he was on the outside looking in. Terrence had grown up with Richard and Jerome on the rough streets of Detroit, fast and hard. They were his brothers under the skin since age nine, his family. Together they ended up running the gay vices in Detroit. (laughs) It's hard not to say it like that. Together they ended up running the gay vices in Detroit for the Garvick family. When things had blown up and they'd had to save themselves, they first ended up in Iowa at witness protection. And after they broke Witsec rules to see his mother before she died, the three of them were moved to Florida. It had taken a lot of negotiating in order to keep them together, but they were family, even if the marshals didn't think so. Lately, though, it seemed his family was moving on. Granted, most of what he was feeling was probably in his head. The guys didn't do important things without him. He was always invited and included in gatherings. The boys called him Uncle Terrence, and he loved both of the kids as well as Jerome's and Richard's partners. Yeah, it's Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, yes, is that you? it's Wednesday. Jerome said, cutting through his thoughts. And it's Joshie's birthday. He lifted the bag he was carrying. I brought over a few things he wanted the last time he was in the shop. I thought you could pick what you wanted to get him. Terrence grinned. The Jerome he knew growing up was hard as nails. Lately, Jerome had turned into a doting uncle, and it was almost comical to watch. You couldn't let me pick out his gift on my own? Jerome looked around. He already has a chainsaw, and he doesn't need a weed whacker. He joked. You could get him a shovel, but he'd dig up the entire yard for dinosaur bones. He handed Terrence a bag filled with dinosaur figures. Perfect. Thanks, Terrence said. He'll love these. He closed the bag and placed it next to where he was working. I was intending for you to give him one. Terrence rolled his eyes. How am I supposed to stay the favorite uncle with just one? He grinned, and Jerome shook his head. Terrence loved to win. I appreciate you looking out for me. It was what they did for each other. Maybe after the gish gifts joshie will stop asking why uncle terrence is grumpy jerome hit him with a glare uh, i guess this is terrence i'm not grumpy i'm jerome didn't look away what short-tempered surly been in a bad mood for the last three months he crossed his arms over his chest and terrence did the same staring jerome down glare all you want but it didn't it doesn't change the facts you need to figure things oh you need to figure things out and decide what you want. Like what? A kid and a boyfriend? What you and Richard have? He shook his head. I'm doing just fine. I like the store. I And I get to work with Richard at the Driftwood on the weekends. Unlike you two turkeys, I'm free to do whatever and whoever I like. Jerome turned to walk away. You keep telling yourself that. He patted Terrence on the shoulder and headed for the exit. Terrence swore under his breath and went back to stocking the shelves, putting more muscle into the job than was really needed. After his shift, Terrence returned to his apartment, where he showered and changed clothes. He wrapped the gifts for Joshie before leaving the building. When they'd first moved to Florida, all three of them had had small apartments in the same complex. Richard was the first to leave, moving into Daniel's condo with him. Jerome followed, moving into a larger apartment with Tucker. Joshie lived with Cheryl just across the hall from him, 
That left Terence, the last one in the building, and his furnished apartment. Most of the time he tried not to think about it, but it was lonely. He was used to having the guys around. Now for years they were in each other's back pockets, doing everything together. Now their lives were more distant, and he was the one getting the short end of the stick. Still, it was time for dinner. He left the apartment and drove the short distance to the driftwood. Everyone was already there, with Kobe, Daniel's son, and Richard's stepson, and Joshy hurrying over as soon as he arrived. Kobe gave him a picture he had drawn of Terrence on a boat. All you. I'll put it on the refrigerator when I get home. He got a hug from each of them, as well as from Tucker, Jerome's partner, and Daniel before sitting down and giving Joshy his gifts. He tore open the bag and then ripped into the presents, bouncing in his seat at the dinosaurs. You want to be Tucker? You need to eat, you need to eat your dinner before you play with them. Tucker said. Joshy looked at him with an expression of exasperation that only a five-year-old could muster. What are you going to have? Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese oh. and french fries. I did not mean to stomp on your line there. <laughs> and <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't know what, it's, it, it's uncanny. It's like you, anyways. Uh, he answered like it was obvious. Terrence had to admit it was what the kid had every week. Daddy, Jerome got a cake, too. He eyed the box sitting on the table that had been brought over to accommodate them all. What about you, Kobe? Terrence asked as he sat across from him. A hamburger and fries and salad. He leaned over the table. Daddy says I have to have salad. Nobody wants salad. He made a yucky face. Not that Terrence could blame him. Salad wasn't one of his favorite things either. I'll show you how to make salad taste really good. He said it like he was sharing a secret, and Kobe grinned like they were being naughty. Tell your dad that you want ranch dressing. It's really good, and you'll like it. He winked, and Kobe grinned back. You want to be Daniel Dwyer? What about? Go ahead. I got it. All right. You're just Terrence. I got it. Daniel asked as he slid into the booth with the boys. Salad. Terrence answered, and Kobe giggled and shared a smile with Joshy. No causing trouble, Richard said as he sat down as well. Does everyone know what they want? Annie will be over to take orders for food, and I got you a beer. He slid the mug in front of Terrence and set down two smaller mugs of root beer for the boys. As usual, everyone settled down around the extended table, conversations flowing between them. Annie took their orders, and like any Wednesday night, they all laughed and talked like the family they were. It reassured Terrence. This was his family, the only family he had, and he felt a little stupid for ruminating on how lonely he was becoming. Richard and Jerome would always be there for him, just like he would be there when the two of them were in trouble. And, judging by their history, it was only a matter of time before that happened again. When Richard met Daniel, they had all worked together to get Daniel out of a scrape. The same could be said of Jerome with Tucker. Granted, those scrapes put Richard and Jerome on the paths to the guys they fell in love with, but Terrence had had to do plenty of things in order to see to it that they came out right on the other side. Not to mention the fact that they had managed to hurt the remnants of the Garvik, yeah, the Garvik organization while remaining anonymous. It had been a delicate dance and one that he had had a major part in. Terrence would do it all over again if he had to. Can we have some more beers here? That's a pretty good accent, Andrew. A man called over the humming conversation. Terrence turned away from the family toward a group of bikers in the corner. They were loud and waving their glasses around, as bikers do. Terrence turned to Richard and nodded. He slid out of the booth and approached Alan, Richard's business partner in the Driftwood, who stood behind the bar. Terrence didn't even dispute speak to Alan. Just a small nod and a glance in their direction was enough for him to know exactly what to do. They veered over toward the table. Jerome appeared beside him and took his arm. Terrence, just don't kill them like you did the last time. He said it loudly enough that the men at the table could hear clearly. It took forever for Alan to clean them, have the mess cleaned up. <laughs> What's this shit? The big meathead asked, getting up from the table, his hands at his hips, chest puffed up and pressed forward. Terrence has seen guys like this many times before. This is about your manners. You are, you be nice to the servers and behave yourself. Terrence saw the swing coming a mile away. He dodged it and smashed his fist into the guy's nose. The guy, getting blood all over his leathers, grabbed his nose and Terrence manhandled him right out the front door. You see how fast things turn around? 
Terrence wasn't going to stand for anything from the likes of him. He knew that if he took care of the ringleader, the others would fall into line. You have a choice. I can call the police, and they'll gladly put you in jail because you swung at me first, or you can stay out here and wait for your friends. Got it? Terrence knew how to use his voice, and the guy snapped to attention at the knife edge he added to the question. Answer me, he said without raising his voice. Still holding his nose, he groaned. Yeah, I got it. Good. Terrence clicked his teeth. I didn't even hit you that hard, you big baby. Then he turned and went back inside. The table with the bikers had quieted down immensely, and one of the guys hurried out to look into their missing member. Terrence checked with Annie and the other servers to make sure they were okay. He was about to return to his seat when his eye caught on a small man wearing a faded blue polo shirt, sitting in the center of the banquet seat where the bikers were. He looked about as out of place as a nun in a whorehouse. That's pretty out of place. <laughs> Let him out. <laughs> Terrence ordered, and the bikers slipped out of the booth. We was just talking to him, one of the guys said. We, he was sitting here all alone, so we were keeping him company. Terrence knew that game, too. Find some guy sitting alone, join him, box him in, scare the shit out of him, and before he knew it, he was paying the bill just to get them to go away. The smaller guy with huge blue eyes and curly blonde hair that flopped forward almost to his eyes slid out of the booth without saying a word. He turned his back to the others and then looked up at Terrence, biting his lower lip like he expected to be hit at any second and was just trying to steal himself so he could take it. Fucking hell. Terrence muttered under his breath, wondering what some son of a bitch had done to this kid. You okay? Did they hurt you? No. He trapped me and started ordering stuff he said, lowering his gaze. I see. And did you know that they were going to get you to pay? Terrence asked. The kid shrugged. And you didn't have any money? Just enough for, why, for what I was going to order, he said softly. And that? I know. That went to a round of beers because he thought they'd leave you alone. Terrence ground his teeth for a second. He had seen that kind of shit plenty back in Detroit. But God, the kid nodded. Don't worry about it. Go on over there to that table. The guy right there is a partner in this place, and the one across from him is Jerome. They're my oldest friends. Go sit down, and I'll be over just as soon as I take care of something. He waited until the guy had taken a few tentative steps away before approaching the group of assholes. What's Big the problem? Guy. The new spokesman for the group asked. He looked just as stupid as the guy Terrence had thrown out. It seems you like pressuring people into buying shit for you. So pay up and get the hell out. Your patronage isn't appreciated. He motioned Annie over. Make up the bill for these gentlemen. And be sure to add a very generous tip for yourself. They'll be settling up. Now. He turned back to the table. Either you pay or you'll deal with me. He gripped the edge of the table. Whatever shit you think you're gonna pull, forget it right now. I broke your friend's nose, and I can break a hell of a lot more than that. He wasn't going to take any crap from these people, and the restaurant's customers shouldn't have to either. Annie brought over the check, and Terrence collected the money and handed it to her. Now get out. But we got change coming, and... What a douchebag. Terrence cracked his knuckles, and any protests dropped away. All four of them got to their feet and headed for the door. Don't come back. Ever. In fact, I suggest that you get off the key and back to the highway. None of the folks out here have any of the trouble that comes from the likes of you. Do I make myself clear? They waited until they were out of the bar and had gotten on their bikes before returning to the table. Uncle Terrence got mad, Joshy said. Colby nodded. Kobe. He punched someone. <laughs> they looked at each other. Terrence groaned. They were really bad men, and they were being mean to people. Don't either of you go hitting anyone. He glanced apologetically at Daniel, Cheryl, and Tucker. The only reason I hit him was because he tried to hit me first. He hoped he hadn't set a bad example. We don't go hitting people, Daniel said, with Tucker echoing it. No matter what Uncle Terrence has to do, okay? Both boys nodded solemnly. Once Annie began delivering their orders, the incident seemed to be forgotten soon enough over hamburgers and bowls of macaroni and cheese. 
Go ahead and order, Terrence told his guest. Annie will bring you whatever you'd like. The man nodded and placed an order for a hamburger and salad with ranch dressing. Terrence shared a conspiratorial look with Kobe. What's your name? He's Ashton, Jerome answered. You know him? Jerome nodded and reached over the table to shake Ashton's hand. You remember, you those... remember those... Oh, sorry. You remember those blown glass pumpkins and snowmen we had in the store? He's the guy that made them. Jerome smiled and introduced everyone. And the guy who saved the day is Terrence. Um, thank you. I didn't know what to do to get away. He seemed like a deer with the most incredible eyes ever, caught in the headlights. I appreciate you getting me away from those guys. I didn't know what they were going to do. Terrence accepted his plate from Annie, who turned to Ashton. I think this would be... Yours will be out in a few minutes. I asked the kiss... She refilled their glasses and brought Kobe some extra ranch dressing. It seemed Kobe had found the joys of the stuff. He looked about ready to drink it. <laughs> Thank you. Ashton told her and then turned to Terrence. I don't know this. You don't owe me anything. I wish I was the stupid. I was just stupid. I was the one stupid enough to get caught by them. God. <laughs> no, you wrote it. My <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he wrote the perfect line afterwards. Bullshit, Terrence said, offering Ashton some of his fries while he waited. Those men were looking for someone to take advantage of. I'm just sorry that it was you. And you need to eat. This is sort of a family dinner night. It's Joshie's birthday, so we'll be having cake later. He was hoping to entice the cute guy to stick around for a little fun. Yeah, okay. it's chocolate cake. Joshy interjected as though that alone was worth just about anything. And Uncle Terrence got me dinosaurs for my birthday. You can play with them if you're sad. By the way, Sue said, uh, Andrew should narrate kids' books. I think you're absolutely right, Sue. Um, <laughs> Ashton actually smiled, the darkness evaporating from his features in an instant. Damn, his smile was radiant. Terrence swallowed hard. It had been quite a while since something that simple turned his head, and he found himself wondering all kinds of things he probably shouldn't be thinking about, at least not in front of the kids. Be Ashton. I'm good, thank you, and your uncle. Ashton said as Annie placed his plate in front of him. Terrence ate his fish while the others talked and brought everyone up to date on their week. I arranged for a boat to take us fishing next Wednesday. Richard said. Can everyone get the day off? I thought we could all go take the boys out for the day. Fishies! Kobe and Joshi said together. Yes. Richard beamed. We can catch some fishies and have a great day on the gulf. The long hood and the water is just cool enough that once we get away from shore, the air will be should be fresh and breezy. What do you think? Daniel was already nodding. Tucker and Cheryl agreed, and Jerome said he had asked for the day off. Terrence wasn't scheduled, so he was clear. Ashton, do you want to come? Jerome asked. It's a lot of fun. The captain takes care of the boat, so we drink, fish, eat, and have a day out on the water. It sounds like fun, he said softly. But his gaze shifted to each of the guys. Judging by Ashton's gaze and the way his back stiffened, Terrence thought he might be afraid. You don't have to come if fishing isn't your thing, Terrence said. Something about Ashton piqued his curiosity. It would still be fun, though. I appreciate that. Thanks. He lowered his gaze to the table and ate his food while the conversation continued. Terrence found himself listening to them as he watched Ashton. Each bite was deliberate and slow, like he was savoring every morsel. I really can't afford something like that. He never looked up. Terrence understood. How many times when he was growing up had he watched others getting whatever they wanted while he had to make do with clothes from the Salvation Army and shoes that barely fit him? Once, when he went to school, 
One of the other kids had pointed and said that Terrence was wearing his older brother's old clothes that had been donated. Terrence had wanted the floor to open up and swallow him. Of course, at recess, he made the kid wish he had kept his damned mouth shut. It's already rented, so if you'd like to come, you'd be welcome, Richard said. Terrence knew he understood as well. Ashton, Jerome said, putting on one of his huge smiles. I just thought you could come along and have a little fun. A bunch of my customers have been asking for more of your work, and I thought we could talk about it. Ashton lifted his gaze. Really? Yeah, Jerome, Jerome told, told him. him. He got a, he, I got a request just today and called the owner, who told me to get in touch with you. We need some fresh items for this time of year. There are plenty of people passing through, and some of them want more than a dolphin than a dolphin bottle over there that says Florida on it to take home with them. <laughs> Ashton grinned. That's pretty awesome. So it's been hard to get people to buy my work. He sighed and returned to eating his dinner, finishing the last of his food. Then he dug into his pockets and pulled out a few bills, which he set at the edge of his plate. I need to go, but thank you for saving me from those guys. Finally, his gaze fell on Terrence. I really appreciate it, but I need to get back home. Jerome stood and shook his hand. We understand. I have your number at the spot, going out with us on the boat, and you can tell me what you have so we can bring more of your work into the store. That would be great, Ashton said, pausing to look at Terrence. Terrence thought Ashton might have something to say, and he leaned forward as if pulled closer by an invisible force, waiting. Thank you again, Ashton said just above a whisper and then turned and hurried toward the door. What are you up to? Terrence asked Jerome as soon as the door closed behind Ashton. Jerome rolled his eyes. Oh, come on. I saw the way you, and now he held his head down but watched you from behind those long lashes of him. The eye for... He cleared his throat before he could finish the word in front of tender ears. That was another change in their lives. Swearing was now completely out the window. Jesus fucking Christ, what a pain in the ass that was. <laughs> really kind of is. Wow. Uh, you know what I mean? He's a nice guy. Maybe a little shy, but... And uh, Terrence glanced at the boys who were sharing some kind of secrets, giggling as they ate and not paying attention to them. I don't need you or anyone playing Marva Matchmaker. He rolled his eyes. I was just helping Alan out and trying to make sure that one of his customers isn't scared off forever. He glared at Jerome. So back off. Fine. Jerome hissed softly. So you don't want me to call Ashton in a few days and remind him about the port boat trip. Or I could just tell him that something came up and that we had to cancel. Then we could all go out and you wouldn't have to worry about seeing him again. And Terrence shook his head. Who says I'm worried? He countered a little too fast. Just relax and go with it. You'll like it. And I think you like it. Jerome finished the last of his fish and leaned back in his chair like he had just won or something. You're a blind as... <laughs> You're blind as a bat. That guy is half scared to death of me, Terrence countered. One thing he definitely knew was fear, and Ashton was afraid of him. The thing was that Terence actually cared. Fear was the tool of his trade, and damn it all if he didn't want Ashton to not be afraid of him. How was that for a kick in the shorts? Jerome smiled. We'll see. He sat up straight and grinned at Joshy. Now who's ready for cake? Using the kids to cut off a perfectly good argument was so unfair. Jesus Christ. You really should do kids' books, I'm telling you, Andrew. You're fucking perfect at it. It's amazing to me. Um, anyways, um, that is bad to be noble. I hate to run, but it's 535. I got to put the dogs. So, I love you to death. I will send you over a YouTube link here shortly. Everyone, thank you for hanging okay. out. Um, obviously, go buy this book. Please do so. Um, and... Andrew, remember, don't go too haywire at Thanksgiving, all right? You're working on the you're working on the thing, mm -hmm. all right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I love you guys. Wait you should to the look camera. so good when you're almost 60.
Well, of course I do. I look fantastic. <laughs> I'm getting pretty close no, to 60, but I'm getting pretty close to 60 <laughs> myself. Um, damn it. I lost yeah, my right. button. See that? I lost my button. <clears throat> I have to like reload my controller just to, yeah, we're, we've been having this conversation in Discord for the last couple of days. I need to buy something called a stream deck because I've been trying to cheap out and not get the stream deck. And this is like the, uh, this is the glitchiest piece of controller software ever. Now I've got it up. Wave, wave by at the camera. Have fun. We're a total professional show. See you later. Bye. Really? It didn't work again? <laughs> I, we might be here forever, Andrew. I don't freaking know. <laughs> I swear to God, there's supposed to be an outro video. Here, I'm going to do this the old manual way. No, we're professional. <laughs> we're totally professional. We do this all the time. Where can I load it manually? Outro video. Outro video. Here.